Hi there, I'm Melissa Nielsen. Today we're gonna to talk about family council, also known as family meeting. You can call it either one of those things. They're both the same. Let's talk about like, first, do you have one? Why do you, why do I think you need one? How does it help your family? So if you don't have one and you're like, I don't even know what this lady's talking about. Family council is a concentrated time when you can come together as a family and discuss what's coming up. So in this time, I usually discuss the next main lesson block or what we're doing for school. Um, when Eric was working outside of the home, he would talk about any big projects he had going on. And that was good because it always gave me this idea, like he's a, he was a newspaper reporter. So I knew, okay, so he's got a big story due on Thursday. So on Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday, he might be stressed. And Wednesday, definitely, he might be at the office later. And Thursday, he's, the story's gonna run or it's going to get edited. So there, you know, it gave me this opportunity to really think about him and his job and what he had going on. Well, that's all working together at home. It allows he and I to make sure we're on the same page with projects that are going on. It allows the children to know what projects we have coming up. So they know, they know if, you know, I've got early meetings one day or I've got late meetings one day. Um, my son that's 14, he's always like, mom, what, what office hours do you have this week? Because our Thank You Feeling Willing office hours um, are 7 a.m. sometimes and 7 p.m. sometimes. And on the 7 a.m. ones, he gets really excited because that means he and I watch a movie that night at 7 p.m. or at, at, in the evening after Soraya goes to bed. So, so this is a time for the whole family to come together and really discuss what's going on. It allows you to be on the same page. It allows you to really sort of hone that space of family culture, a family culture that feels happy and feels um, everybody's succinct, everybody's on the same page. And even the young, really young kids. So I start having kids come to family council when they're little, as soon as they can sit at the table. I mean, well, even before that, when they're infants, they're in the high chair and they're sitting there. So we sort of continue that space as they grow. So how do I have it and when do I have it? I like to have it during a meal. <laughs> Why? Because they won't leave and they generally don't argue. So I will generally tend to have it on Sundays. I have tried moving it to Saturdays for years and it just does not work for our family. It tends to work best on Sundays for us. Um, when, you know, we were still going to church every week, um, you know, outside of the home. Now we're doing it inside the home, but when we we're doing it outside of the home, we would go and then come home and do it over lunch. And that was a great way to sort of um, end the week and get ready for next week, and everybody would be on the same page. Um, but really now, we're just doing it over Sunday um, Sunday supper uh, meal, and I generally, you know, we're, that means we have to sit down at the dining room table, <laughs> and I bring my planner, Eric brings his planner, and one of the things that's worked so well for us over the years is that we have the family calendar synced to one Google account. So when he puts something into his calendar from his phone, um, you know, maybe it's, he's scheduled a dentist appointment or he's got an appointment somewhere else. I know it. It's in the family calendar. We, it's all there. And the same for me. If I'm going to have the kids and be gone for a certain amount of time, he knows that I'm going to be gone. That way, there's less like, oh, no, what's happening going on. Now, I will say that's not my work calendar. That's just the family calendar. So I sit down on Mondays at work, when I sit down at my desk, and I did this program a while back, and it was it totally um, gave me an eye into how to have a better like work week. And um, it, it's called Monday Hour One, and it's from it's from Brooke Castillo over at the, the Life Coach School, and they're great over there. And and it really, I always had honed my schedule, but this was this extra layer. So what I do on Mondays is I sit down on Monday mornings and I spend an hour and I get every to-do list item out of here and onto paper. And then I schedule when it's going to happen. Now I realize that, see, I'm in the space where I'm running a business and running homeschool. So I'm, I'm, I'm sharing this because I know that's the reality for a lot of people. So when I have this Monday hour one, it's after that family meeting. So that family meeting informs often what I'm putting on my calendar for the next week. So that calendar then for the next week that I have for myself 
is not the shared family calendar. It's my work calendar. It's where what I'm doing when and how I'm putting it together. And that's really very helpful with regards to the family council, the family plan. So if you're working from home, consider having one family calendar that everybody um, posts to, even the teenagers when the we had teenagers in the house that were you know, have their own smartphones, they all, we all use the same calendar because using the same calendar really allowed everybody to see, like if my, you know, my teenage sons wanted to go do something, but they, they looked at the calendar and they realized, Hey, wait, mom's going to be at the car with the car somewhere else. That's not going to happen, but they can look and they can see. And it also really gave them um, a huge incentive to being present at those meetings. So if they had something they wanted to do that week, it had to be on the calendar because if it wasn't on the calendar, it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen because they realized, hey, wait, mom plans her her week based on this calendar, based on what we've got going and where she can fit things in. So really and truly that, that um, family planning session or family council session becomes collaborative. So everybody is together and everybody's on the same page. And what we found as a family is doing that family council allows you to then bring up bigger topics. Aside from just the calendar, you're all there together. You're already on the same page discussing and sort of being in this lovely family culture space of, of peace and harmony, hopefully. <laughs> Things that happen at family meetings that haven't always been peaceful, but in general, that's what we strive for. But it also allows you to bring up other topics. So we might discuss a family vacation during um, family council, what we're gonna do, what the days we're going to be gone, how it's going to look, um, you know, what things they might need to bring in the car, that kind of thing. Um, we might discuss um, like a big important topic um, you know, there have been a lot of big important topics in 2020 that we've discussed. We've discussed them in family council because our kids know that that's a safe place to discuss them. It's a safe place for them to bring up questions and for them to be able to say, I heard this on the news. You know, does that mean, like, what does that mean? That doesn't mean they can't bring up something any other time. But the family council just tends to be this time where we're having this good family discussion and they, they bring in things that they may have heard or frustrations that they may have had or something that a friend said, and it gives us the opportunity to talk about it. Beyond that, it also gives us the opportunity to lay down the hammer if we need to, like, okay, we've noticed that chores aren't being done as well as they could be. We take responsibility for that because obviously we fell down on making sure that ch chores are being done, but we need you guys to, you know, step in line. Do we need to have a chore adjustment? Are there chores that you don't like doing? Are there, you know, and it allows us to sort of have the space then to cover that topic as well. So then aside from the family council, one of the things that Eric did when he worked outside the home. And, and he doesn't do it nearly as much now because we're both here together. But when he worked outside the home, um, he was gone often between 40 and 50 hours a week. And so if you, this is your reality, even if you are working at home and you're, you're still, um, you know, maybe you are in an office 40 to 50 hours a week and the other parent is then running the home, this might be super helpful for you. Um, we did dad interviews. They could be mom interviews, of course, but we did them, we did dad interviews because dad was the one that left the house. And in the dad interviews, one thing that we did was it, it, it gave him the opportunity to meet with each child and see what was, how they were doing. It's just sort of a check-in. And also it, it made he and I, when we had our personal time together, we, we could talk about each child and I could say, Jacob has been a real handful this week. And, and he and I could talk about why we think that might be. And then he could bring that to his meeting with Jacob. I'd say, hey, your mom says you've been, you know, she's really been struggling with you this week. What's going on? And then he'd have the opportunity to say, oh, I think I'm just sad because my friend, he just didn't, he doesn't want to be with me anymore. So he might open up to dad and say something to dad that he wouldn't have said to me. Um, it also gives him the opportunity to like praise a child. Like mom says you've been doing great on your main lesson work this week. And maybe that praise wasn't quite um, appropriate to bring to the family council because maybe it would make another child not feel bad, but it, it wouldn't maybe be appropriate for the whole space. And so it was more appropriate to praise them separately or, hey, I know you were really struggling with something last week, but mom says you did great this week. So utilizing that time for those interviews 
as a time to connect with the child. And sometimes, often, it was more, it was less formal, and it was more like, hey, I'm going to the store, come with me. And so, um, you know, he would take one child and they would go to the store. It was always the space of really, like, loving that dad time. And, and even now, I mean, we, we do that in a, in a different way now that we're both working at home, but it's, it's about being truly conscious and connected with each child. When you do that, it makes that whole family culture piece so much sweeter. It's especially helpful, I would say, if you are struggling with one of your children to really step in there and do those interviews. <laughs> because when you're struggling with them, that's when you learn the most about them. It's also when you learn the most about yourself. So, you know, I do a lot of different exercises um, that we talk about in our program. I meditate on my children often, meditate on them um, the way I think God sees them. Because often when we're frustrated at a child and their behavior or what's going on, we kind of have blinders on and we don't see that part. But when we step back and we go, okay, how does God see this child? And again, whatever noun you put on, on the word God, um, it allows us to then step back from our own feelings about that child and instead then look at what does this child need and how can I help them get that? So truly taking that time to connect with each one of them is so, so important. I recommend it at least weekly. You have a lot of kids, like we I always felt like we had this brood. <laughs> it was great though. Um, we've only got two left at home and so we have times where I'm like, it feels empty, but it's perfect. It feels like it should. It should. We, we're at that space, and it's a beautiful space to be. I, I encourage you, though, to create that family culture that feels good and peaceful and loving so that your children always know they can talk to you and that you can always bring things to them that you need to. And utilize family counsel. Family counsel is so um, is so helpful. It's been so helpful to us over the years. There are so many things that if we, on the weeks that we've missed family counsel, I'm like, dang it, it wasn't on the calendar. And that's why we screwed up and we missed it. But when you do it, you have got it together, then it's super helpful. So I hope that was helpful. Hope you have a wonderful week. See you later.